Passion is body's way of fooling the mind. And the fun part is, the mind knows it. Passion is a play, played out by body and mind intertwined with each other, sometimes fighting a duel, sometimes singing a duet. The eye sees a tempting flesh and incites a desire in the mind, desire to touch, smell, and test that flesh. This is start of passion. And at the start, it is just lust, raw lust, which is at this stage just an unrefined passion. Or in other terms, passion is refined lust, just like sensuality. The eye perceives the object of desire, and gradually, yearning for that object grows bigger and bigger, and in this process, the desire takes the control of rational mind. Then mind gets completely occupied to devise the means to fulfill this bodily desire. Passion is that play on the stage of mind that is happy to play its own inner monologues continuously. Passion is that play of mind that is happy to play on its own stage, creates its own characters, its own drama, its own anxieties, its own tragedies and also a happy ending with excitement, exuberance, and elation. At this stage, any creative mind, diseased, or rather, I wouldn't use the word diseased, but overcome, any creative mind, overcome by passion, will find artistic ways to sublimate that passion. Such minds will create prose through sonnets, poetry, literature, and describe that desire for the flesh, or create music and sing songs, or through visual art, create paintings of the objects of desire. This creative process is refinement of lust. This is where creative minds turn raw, lustful passions into creative, artistic, and refined passions. Now the obvious question here is, if the eye is the initiator of such bodily passions, does it mean the minds that lack this faculty of sight or vision lack bodily passions? No, of course not. In this case, the tactile sense, the bodily touch, overtakes the mind and drives it crazy. So passion is initiated by sense of sight. If not sight, sense of touch. If not touch, then sense of smell. If not smell, then sense of hearing. If not hearing, then the sense of test. Mother Nature, in her bounty, has endowed us with so many sensory inputs that it is hard for humans to escape their influence and not feel any kind of passion. We are doomed to fall into the trap of one passion or the other through at least one or all senses. Blessed are those creative minds who get high on intense passions through all the senses at the same time. They are the ones who are living in a fancied paradise on this very earth. We would all love to live in such a blessed state of complete and intense passion all the time, but it is very taxing on the mind and the human body's biological mechanism won't allow that. Sex is just one of the many aspects of human passion. This passion can be heightened by mutual respect, genuine understanding of each other, and sense of admiration for each other's virtues and even minor vices. This sounds almost like love, which, like sex, is just another form of expression of mutual passion. Like fire, passion starts with a small spark. It burns slowly, and as more fuel is put into it, gradually grows bigger and bigger. It burns vigorously into explosion, and once consumed, dies out slowly and silently. Intense passions burn faster, in bigger blast, and die out sooner. Slow-burning passions sustain themselves and last longer. Those passions have a pattern. 
They ignite slowly and gradually turn to crescendo and burst into elation and over the time they die out. In old times, wise old minds dismissed youthful passions as devil's work, a temptation away from virtuous life. In modern times, they say passion is just a trick of hormones. But is it just that, a temptation away from virtues or a trick of hormones? Isn't there something more to human passions? What about older folks' passions when the hormones have pretty much lost their control over mind and mind has grown wiser and virtuous? What about the passions of such minds? Don't older, wiser minds have their own passions like youthful passions? Of course they do. Humans, no matter at what stage of life they are, will always have passions inside them, in one form or the other. Outside factors can also ignite passions in our minds, not just visuals of some attractive fellow human, but natural elements like a spectacular visual of a sunset, soothing sound of continuous rainfall, a colorful flower, a mellifluous bird song, night lit with luminous moonlight, a fading smell of blooming flowery garden nearby, reading a love letter, all can ignite those transient passions in our senses. Transient they might be, but so intense that they can take our minds away from the present into somewhere much pleasurable. A simple madeleine dipped in lemon tea can take one Marcel Proust down the memory lane of his childhood. This is the testament to the power of sense of test. A creative, thoughtful, meandering mind needs just one intense sensual touch and the whole world of passion can flow from it. Now let's move from mere bodily passion into something more sublime. Imagine a truly passionate mind that has been emancipated from mere bodily desires, a mind that is not fixated on one object of desire and is freed from the prison of senses. For such an emancipated mind, entire existence is passionate. Living every moment is passionate. For such a mind, passion is nothing but zest for life and existence itself. By now, it should be clear to viewers that passion is not just a realm of body, mind, senses or even thoughts and feelings. For a truly passionate mind, a mind emancipated from all of these boundaries, passion can be longing for something even greater. And I'm not talking about religious fervor here, seeking God and all. No, this has nothing to do with religious fervor or mellowing down of senses due to advanced age. No, in old age, passion has another form. This longing for something beyond yourself, something infinite, that is also a passion, longing, an unnamed longing for something far greater. This is desire for something that transcends mere bodily existence, mere senses, and it is universal longing. It is not culturally specified. So my point is, passion never dies as long as we live as conscious human beings. We are always passionate about one thing or the other throughout all stages of our lives. As children, our passions are playful. As youth, our passions are creative. And as adults, our passions are for nurturing what we have created. Let me know in the comments which artwork evoked the greatest passion in you. And thank you for your attention.